Junior church, you may be dismissed. Amen. And for the rest of us, if you got your Bibles this morning, Jeremiah chapter 17 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 17 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Boy, it's good to, it's good to live in a country where we can celebrate freedom, amen. Uh, celebrate hope and liberty and freedom. And, and we can meet in God's house and we're not oppressed, we're not suppressed, we're not, uh, 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 as, a, as of right now, we're, we're still able to meet freely. Uh, I believe those rights will be uh, soon taken from us in, in not many years to come. And then, we'll, then there'll be a lot of people that say, oh, I wish I would have took advantage of the freedom that we had while we had it. And, uh, you know, freedom that we can sit here in an air-conditioned building and worship freely the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That we can listen to Brother Scott uh, sing about the ship of Zion, man, and, what it, and, and the salvation that it brings, the liberty that we have to worship together and fellowship with one another. Thank God for that. I thank God for a country uh, that was founded on biblical principles. We, we're not living in North Korea today. We're living in the United States of America. Canada's Independence Day is July 1st, 1867. Brazil's Independence Day is September 7th, 1822. That's, that's actually, the, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the biggest outreach for Brother Ryan Lawson. Uh, they go into town, they had their big Independence Day, September 7th. Germany's is October 3rd, 1990. But the greatest National Independence Day is July 4th, 1776. Commemorating and celebrating America's Declaration of Independence from the tyranny of Britain. It's not often put that way, but that's the facts and that's the truth. Independence from forced Religion, independence from government tyranny, and yeah, independence from a uh, power-hungry queen. You can't watch the Mel Gibson's movie, what was it, The Patriot, without just mm, a little oomph for being an American citizen, amen. But America has been enjoying freedom and religious liberties for the past 200 years, and a lot of people have absolutely abused it, definitely, sure. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have taken it for granted. Absolutely. Uh, we all probably, I'm sure, fall guilty of that, amen, at times. Like I tell you, there's been a lot of people that have died for that freedom. There's not a lot of things that I would say are worth dying for, but that's one of them. Can I tell you that it's a biblical principle? It's actually the central message of the Bible. Hope, liberty, and freedom. Brother Raleigh, would you open this message in a word of prayer, sir? Number one, the word of God is a message of hope. There's a Bible that is called the Bible of the Revolution. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but a Bible, it's called the Bible of the Revolution. It's known as the Aitken Bible. Robert Aitken, who has started printing the King James uh, New Testament in the colonies in 1771, he gained support of the United States Congress to print the entire King James Bible, which he did in 1782. His Bible became known as the Bible of the Revolution because it was printed in a small size so copies could be distributed to the soldiers in the colonial army. The Word of God has power. The Word of God is power. And the Word of God gives hope. 
And the leaders at that time in our country knew the power of the Word of God and the hope that it gives. How can you fight, how can you fight any battle or a war without hope? That's miserable. That's like, that's like enjoying your marriage without love. It, that's the incentive. I don't want to go whatever job you're, I don't want to go dig a ditch all day to support a family that I don't love. I, I, know, uh, I know two men off the top of my head, boom, right now, that, that I've worked with for years, or used to work with for years, and um, th they had gone through divorces, and that's awful. That's an awful, awful thing. Uh, um, um, it's just awful. Got, got to, anyway, ugh, let me get my opinions out of it. But um, their joy was just always gone. They're generally not happy people. It's like they were zapped and just, like, what, what, what are they working for? They're paying off this, and they're paying child support, and they're paying this. They're, like, their joy was gone. I'm not saying they're right or wrong in the world. I don't know nothing about it. But without hope and without having motivation, amen, we have a word of God that literally gives us hope through the promises that we have as born-again believers. And, and I'm telling you, I hope that you're saved this morning. We had uh, many great conversations yesterday at the flea market. And, and um, <coughs> what's the basic thing that you almost always hear? Oh, I, I love God. I pray to God. Um, I'm, I ask him all the time to forgive me of my sins. These are common things. I'm hoping that I'm going to heaven. Uh, um, I'm hoping that, my, that, that I'll be good enough and, and God will know my heart that I really had good intentions so that I can eventually make it to heaven. But that's never what salvation is, was at any given time in the past, present, or will be in the future. God's just been so clear with salvation. You, you want to debate about prophecy? Okay. You, you, want to, um, you want to talk about divorce? Well, God's pretty clear on that too. But you, you want to talk about topics we can talk about? Salvation is so simple. Yeah, we have religions and, yes, denominations that do not teach what Jesus taught on how to get to heaven. That's ridiculous. How could we be a part of an organization that's not even uh, 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 teaching what the Bible says? How can that happen? From men and women that don't read it for themselves. So here we have people walking through the flea market. Nice people. Most of them were very kind in, in, in talking with us. But, but they don't understand that they believe in God. Awesome. That's a great starting point that any three or four year old can have. But also, Satan and his demons, devils, believe in God also. But the difference is, they tremble. Jeremiah 17, 7, I hope you're there. It says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. Shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green. Shall not be careful in the year of drought, and neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Church, that's not talking about financial gains. That's talking about being spiritually mature. When you go to the workplace and you're not studying in the Word of God, your heart's not right, you, you are no testimony to your fellow employees. You're not a strong tree with a tree trunk. You're a little, you're a little weed that's just going to topple right over because you're ashamed of that, that you're not a testimony, let alone the Bible that you know or don't know. We know biblical hope is... Not how we see it today. We use the word hope. And, and words, words change their meaning sometimes uh, uh, with culture. We think of the word hope, and I've said this a bunch of times. I don't want to dwell on it. But, you know, we think of the word hope nowadays. You say hope. Well, I hope we're going to the restaurant later. I hope that we're going to the movies. I hope we're doing whatever. We think, well, it's just a total maybe thing. No, no, no. No, no, no. There's a hope, and, and, and when Scripture is using the word hope, it's, it's, it's talking about what we're trusting in. You know, my, 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 uh, I, I hope the car is going to get me to the, to the movies. Well, nowadays we think, well, maybe it's going to get, it sounds like it's not going to. No, I hope my hope is in that car because my hope is going to take me there. You know, I hope Jesus Christ is going to, uh, through his shed blood, gets me to heaven. It's not that maybe it's going to happen. No, that's what I'm putting my trust in. My hope is in Jesus Christ. I always think of uh, biblical hope. That song, every hope 
that I have here in this old sinful world is anchored in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved to the uttermost. I know that I am. When's the last time you sung at work something about the Lord? The Word of God is a message of hope. Our hope, our hope of, of heaven. Our hope of the indwelling spirit, amen. The, the hope of all things working together for our good. This is hope that we can count on. We can uh, thank God for. The hope of uh, ha having the, the, the being partakers of the benefits. The hope of all the promises. I mean, just do a study on the promises uh, that God's given to the, to the believer in the word of God. That's an encouragement all in and of itself. But yet we have depressed Christians that are just ashamed and they'd rather just watch TV Hope of the eternity with the God of Abraham. Uh, hope of being in the presence of uh, uh, the Lamb of God that shed his blood for us. And if that doesn't excite you, then get your mind off of Burger King right now. Just start thinking about what Christ has done for you. Amen. America knew early on that there's hope in the word of God. But did you know that point number two... The word of God is also a message of liberty. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. It says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Brother Tony, you had liberty in Sunday school this morning. I've got liberty preaching right now. There is liberty in the word. Oh, do we abuse liberty? Oh, yeah. Aiken abused it. He abused it, and there's consequences for it. We abuse liberties all the time. God's given us a free will. Doesn't mean there's not consequences for what we do and don't do. So often I believe that the world looks at the word of God as a book of rules that the weak have to follow. I've had a number of atheists tell me that. And, 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 and they're, they're right and they're wrong. They're right in that... Um, uh, yes, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a book that God's given us that, that I am weak and I need to follow. But God's given me liberty. I don't have to follow the word of God. But boy, I want to. Boy, I want to. I don't come to church because of Hebrews 10.25, which is not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The problem is people are going to church less because there's more things to distract them from the Word of God. I come to church because I want to. These boys come to church because they have to or they always did. I hope that we've transitioned. Now they come to church because they want to. I mean, even if you didn't want to, you'd still have to. But I would hope that you're coming because you want to. Amen. And I believe that they are. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. I hope you're there. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty where the Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What's the yoke of bondage? Everything that we put in front of the word of God. Everything that we put in front of church. Everything we put in front of study. In front of reading. In front of praying. Everything, that's the yoke of bondage that we love to put on because it's easy to put on. Boy, it's tempting. You know, I got visits. I'm backed up on visits I haven't made, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I've been struggling with my time. And it's real easy to just say, man, Lord, I'm just really tired. I'm just going to go watch TV. I use that as an illustration all the time because I'm, I'm human too. I love watching TV. I love watching them in Alaska survival shows, man. That's just relaxing to me. But there's things that need to get done. There's things that need to get done, amen. As born-again believers, God's given us a liberty that can't be compared to. As in, we need to stop walking around and complaining about our problems to everyone that'll, that has an ear. It would be a whole lot worse as a child of God if we weren't saved at all and we were going to hell. That means that every day as a Christian is a wonderful day. So now all of, our, all of our complaints really seem pretty minuscule, you know? Amen. Amen. We just need to stop worrying about things that are out of control and let it go. 
Jump to Galatians chapter 5, 13. Reminds me of another song. I'm not going to hell. I've been forgiven. What a story I tell. I've saved and forgiven. Set free all is well. I'm not going to hell. No, I'm not going to hell. That's an awesome song. You know what's, know what, know what's shameful, Brad Tony? First time I listened to that song, I'm being honest with you. I thought, well, that's boring. Because I'm thinking musically. I'm thinking like, wow, it's G, 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 D, G, G, like, oh my goodness, that's like the most boring pattern in the world. And then Noah's like, amen. But once I got past listening to that, I thought, oh my goodness, those words are so good. And I'll listen to that all day long, amen. Amen. Where was I? Let's see. Um, Galatians 5.13 said, For a brother, and you have been called unto liberty, only use now liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. What does using liberty as an occasion to the flesh even mean? Well, how about liberty to your spouse? I'm the man of the house. I'll tell my wife what to do. That's not what love is, folks. That's not what love is. I'm glad that God doesn't do that to us. This is what you have to do. Oh, by love, serve one another. And he gives us that example, giving us the free will. Oh, there, here's the principles laid out for you. Here's what you should be doing. You have liberty to do thus, thus, and thus. You have a choice to not do them, even though you know what's right and you don't do it. Guess what? To you, that's sin. We get callous to that because we keep not doing it. Amen. There's liberty with the Lord. I can stay home from church whenever I want. I won't read my Bible whenever I want. I won't heed to the Word of God. In fact, I won't even consider the Word of God until I show up to church time. Right. What a shame. Amen. What a shame. I hope you know where your Bible is at home before Sunday morning. Even though we have liberty to sin, church, that's not what liberty is for. Right. It's to serve the Lord. Amen. And what a liberty that is. We live in a country that allows us that liberty, at least for now. Amen. We have liberty in Christ. Let's not abuse it. We need to revel in it. We need to enjoy it. The, the, the lost world might honor a soldier that died for them, but at the same time deny the Savior who gave his life for them. Much like America, the word of God is a message of hope. Much like America, the word of God, is a message of liberty. And finally, much like America, the word of God is a message of freedom. The children of Israel, they celebrated freedom from 400 long years of hard slavery in Egypt. We actually can't imagine that. We, we can't even fathom that. We've been a country for a couple hundred years, right? We can't imagine 400 years of generation after generation after generation just being complete slaves. What's it called? Institutionalized. When, a, uh, when an inmate's been in prison for like so long, I don't know, 20 or 30 years, they can't function in society when they come out. They, uh, oftentimes they can't function in society because they, they've been just told to go here. And told that You've been trained. It's just like having a, 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 a pet bird. They just do what they've been taught to do because that's what they've always done. That's our human nature. And, then, and that's why when, when God brought them out of Egypt, he gave them, uh, where is it, is it in Exodus or Leviticus, were just all these rules to, to live by for his people. And, and there's and some hard reading in there. But, but it's because they didn't even know how to live. God had to lay things out for his people, especially since he was using them to bring the Son of God. Amen. On a side note, you know, I bet there's a lot of bitterness to the children of Israel. But I mean, sure there was. There's a lot of, a lot of Jews that, that never made it to heaven that were part of that in that 400 years. Just because they were a Jew didn't mean they were Christian. Amen. Missing the big picture that, you know what, God put them in bondage to protect them from whatever else was happening to keep them right here so that, that at the right time he could bring them out and then set things up for the Savior to come. 
You say, I've had such a bad day, you don't understand. I can't even read my Bible. I'm so busy, I can't go to church. I can't even witness to my friends. My life is so hard. Did you just imagine that maybe God allowed you to go through a hard time because you need to suffer a little? But it's been a year and I've been going through this. I, I've been gone months without a job. My life is hard. Wham. Yeah, and we go through hard times. I know everyone in here has gone through something valley in their life, whether it's been a day, a week, a month, a year, years, whatever. But if we just give our heart to the Lord, you just imagine that maybe God wanted you to go through this to grow you and to prepare you for the future. But that's not how we do. Because we want ice cream now. We don't want to eat no broccoli. Amen. Got to bring it down to Brad John's level down here. Amen. Every Jew that came from Egypt didn't put their trust in Christ spiritually or the God of Abraham spiritually. But any Jew that came out of Egypt that put their trust in the word of God and, and had... And had an experience in their life where they said, God, I'm going to put you first. I'm, I'm relying on your word and not just because I'm a Jew. Those, I want to say Christians. They weren't called Christians then. But those children of God are the ones that are going to, we'll see in heaven one day. Not because they were a Jew. But when they got set free, those Jews not only enjoyed physical freedom, but more importantly, spiritual freedom. God brought his people into Egypt through famine and pestilence. And Remember how Joseph was sold into slavery uh, by his brothers and how God used that and Joseph to become a mighty leader in Egypt? How his father Jacob, who was called Israel, and, and his son survived, all because God made provisions in Egypt through famine and hard times. God uses suffering for his will. God uses suffering to grow us. But, but in our culture today, we want nothing to do with suffering. Our, our flesh don't like suffering. I hate suffering. I'll tell you that. I hate arthritis. Amen. But God told Abraham that his people would see 400 years of famine. And God's people came to Egypt to survive. God actually was protecting them that whole time. Taking care of them. Giving them food and shelter. Oh, it wasn't easy. Oh, it was a whole lot of suffering. Amen. God's people came to Egypt and saw blessings, even if they didn't know they were there. Egypt back then, just like the lost world today, doesn't know the hope that we can rest in knowing the, 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 the power that is in the Word of God. And Egypt back then, just like the lost world today, doesn't know the freedom that they're missing out on, completely missing out on all the benefits of salvation, the peace, the comfort, the rest, the knowledge, the foundation, the promises, the, the uh, eternity in paradise. Amen. You say, what are you getting at, preacher? Those Jews, God's chosen people, the children of Israel, lived under bondage for 400 years in a place where there's only slavery and hardship. And not everybody that was a Jew believed in the God of Jacob. And as we as Americans, bear with me now, we as Americans, we so often take our liberties and our freedoms for granted, not realizing and forgetting, not realizing, or we also forget what a privilege that we have. Here's what I'm saying. My Aunt Karen went to China uh, my, 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 my uncle's a, some engineer for GM, I think, and uh, he took on a two-year stint in China, ended up being there, I think, three, maybe, and um, um, there's not freedom in China. Oh, they want, they act like there is, and they act like, oh, you have freedom and liberty. There is no freedom in China. Post that all over the internet. My aunt, um, had to sign some papers that she was bringing a Bible into the country. And, and the country said, you can bring one Bible, but there's stipulations, and you got to sign off on it. You will share the gospel with no one. You keep the Bible in your apartment, and then that's it. That's not freedom. Of course, she shared the gospel with anyone that she could. And when she went to church, it had to be an underground church, because you can't go to church. Uh, not for the God of Abraham. Oh, you can go to government-sponsored churches. Yeah. Do, do whatever 
whatever his name is, whatever he teaches. She went to church and, man, she came home so thankful for the religious liberty and the freedom and the hope that we have to be a child of God, to live in a country that we can freely worship the Word of God. Amen. Yeah, we take it for granted because we're here all the time. Amen. Um, the missionary to Mongolia that was here not long ago, I won't use his name, He's not allowed to print the Word of God at all. You cannot print the Word of God and hand that out freely. Now, why would you ever, why? Why, why, why? What has Christianity ever done for a people? Yeah. Give them freedom? Yeah. Christianity has only helped, let's just look from financial points of views, and, 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 and I don't know what I'm looking for, uh, helping people point of view. Christianity's just done good for all these other countries. Yeah. Countries in the name of Christianity, amen. Uh, um, can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, but we just take that for granted. So he has to go around things and, and, and make things like a business. So as far as they're concerned, he's a business, and he gets paid to print Bibles. And that's all that the Internet needs to know. But he lives in a country where there is not freedom to do what you want. Not freedom. We have freedom, Brother Tony. If you can find a missionary in Russia that's spreading the gospel, they have to call themselves volunteers. I don't know if you guys knew this or not. In 2016, a law was passed in Russia that no missionaries are allowed to come and spread the gospel message. Huh. Hmm. Does that make us uh, more proud of our freedoms or less proud? It ought to make us go home and say, thank you, God, for the word of God that we're allowed to read Thank you, God, that you've given it to us. Thank God we don't live in North Korea where it's completely banned. Amen. Oh, now, our country's not, not without fault. The, the Catholic Church would literally murder people if they had a word of, the word of God. Murder people. We're not without fault, but we live in a time right now where God has given it to us freely. Amen. And we still have those liberties. And those might not be there forever. I don't expect them to be. Here's an interesting one. Vladimir Putin, in October of 2021, signed into law that all pastors and clergy and any religious organization that is still allowed within Russia must be updated with professional education that is literally headed up by the government. Satan loves this. Satan doesn't like freedom. How do we use in our freedom this morning? Let's go golfing instead. Let's go golfing. I, I don't need to waste my time. My time is too precious to give it to the Lord. We might say how horrible it is that these authority figures, um, North Korea, Russia, Mongolia, restrict the freedom and the hope and liberty that we have in, in spreading a gospel message. Amen. But we not need to be so biased. Um, you know, pious to think, man, those awful dictators. Because let's just get real for a moment. How much of the gospel message are we restricting in our own homes, in our own lives? Think about it now. We restrict, I'm not going to read it because I don't got time. You know what? It's not, um, what was the COVID word? Um, Churches weren't, um, I want to say necessity, essential. We say the word of God is not essential. You know what, God? I, I, I'm tired from work. You're not essential in my life today. Lord, I know it's been two days and I haven't prayed. You're not essential. In the, Lord, I know I haven't gone to church. You're just not essential because there's more important things than the word of God. We hold our children back. We hold our family back because we don't want to follow the word of God because we're selfish. Right. What are you saying? I'm saying that not everyone that calls himself a Christian is a Christian. Just like the Jews back in Egypt. Oh, they might have suffered even for the cause of Christ because of their name by calling themselves a Jew or by being a Jew by birth. 
But not everyone that was a Jew understood what, what it was to have hope in a sovereign God. Not everyone that was a Jew uh, knew about the liberty that was available to him. Not everyone that was a Jew understood what freedom really was or even meant. And just like the Jew back then, like, it's like the unsaved Christian today. Notice I said unsaved Christian. You can call yourself a Christian and be completely lost. They don't know the hope that we can rest in knowing the power that's in the Word of God. I, I know that there's great power in the Word of God, and I haven't even scratched a dent in it. There's power in the Word of God. The unsaved Jew back then, just like the self-righteous, works-based salvation believer today, has no clue of the freedom that they're missing out on. Completely missing out on the benefits of salvation, the peace and the comfort and the rest. Amen. The foundation, the promises. Amen. God's given us all these things. There's been many martyrs throughout the years that have been tortured for the cause of Christ. I'll be done in less than two minutes. All these martyrs throughout the years that have been tortured for the cause of Christ have been mutilated to death, burned at the stake, tarred, feathered, hung, shot. Those martyrs today are enjoying freedoms like this world has never known. I am so proud of what our American flag stands for. I am. America, 100%. But I am more proud, a million times over, for what the Word of God stands for. Thank God that we're a, a citizen of the best country in all the world. Thank God that he allowed us to even have a country that has, stands on biblical principles. At least as a whole still kind of does. It's crumbling fast. But man, this is something to be far more proud. But yet, but yet we'll be more quick to, to raise the American flag than we are than the word of God. Amen. Abraham found that city that he's looking for. <laughs> Amen. He found the city that he was promised. You know, I hope that you're looking for a city this morning. Because if you're truly looking for it, and you're searching the scriptures, you'll see that if you become born again, that's a spiritual birth, you'll see that city that was promised to Abraham and is also promised to us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am not a judge of who's saved and who's not, but it sure is a high question in my mind when there is zero desire to serve the Lord. If there is no desire to serve the Lord in your heart, I would do a strong self-check to say, Lord, am I saved? Can I just say that a prayer doesn't save you? It is literally calling upon God, and it is a heart change. Oh, you do it through prayer. You do it through talking with God. But it's a heart change. And if you never had a moment in your life where you had a heart change and decided, Lord, I just want to serve you for the rest of my life, not just said words with some preachers told you to say, but really had a heart change, that's salvation. It's a moment in your life that you can look to and say, that's the moment that I got saved. There's a lot of conversations I heard the men and ladies, too, talking with, 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 with folks at the flea market explaining what salvation is. Yeah, it's a shame that we live in the freest country in the world and, and, and it's it supposed to be a Christian nation. And obviously it was birthed on Christian principles, right? But so many people don't even know what Jesus says about going to heaven. That's sad, man. What, what are we going to do about it? Let's go out and tell the world about it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What becomes new? A new, amen. A new spiritual hope, a new spiritual liberty, a new spiritual freedom. I mentioned it before, but I'll end with this. A lost world might honor a soldier that died for them. But there's one greater who, who sacrificed more than they can even fathom. 
Uh, there's a Savior who gave more than the ultimate sacrifice, not only the death, but the sacrifice of sin for every man and woman and child that ever lived from Adam to the last man that's ever going to live. Past, present, and future. It's, it ain't broke up, guys. No, no. There's one salvation. There's not five. There's not seven. There's not three. There's not two. I don't, no, 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 no. Jesus, no, no. The disciples was preaching the same gospel that Jesus preached. I'm here to tell you. The same gospel. John uh, the Baptist was preaching the same gospel. There's only one salvation. John 3.16, brother, me and brother Robert, sharing with some ladies. He died for the sins of all mankind, not certain time groups. Amen. Jesus Christ gave his life because he knew that our spiritual freedom was worth the sacrifice. I, I, I love being an American. Man, I'll put my hand on my heart. I will never kneel, ever, for the flag. But I'm far more proud to be called a Christian. Nothing in comparison to the American flag. Nothing in comparison than this right here. Christians, let's live like that. Let's, let, let's actually do what God wants us to. Boy, there's going to be a lot of ashamed uh, Christians getting to heaven. I wish you guys could have seen Miss Ruby sweating out in the heat, passing out bags and talking to people about Christ and inviting them to church. That's a blessing right there. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you, God, for the freedom to meet this morning. Help us.